So it's six o'clock. Um, I'd like to open up the meeting. And are there any adjustments at all to the the agenda, the court agenda? I don't have any. Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Any public comment? Okay. So um, I guess we'll approve the bills to the town um, by signing them after the meeting. Okay. And um, so is oh good, perfect timing. So do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the August 9th, uh, 2021 Select Board meeting? Is there a second? Any discussion at all about the minutes? We're good? Okay. So all those in favor of approving the minutes from the August 9th, 2021 Select Board meeting uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, good. So, um, we have with us here Chris Rivett from Dubois and King and Grace Vinson from the Central Vermont Regional Plan Planning Commission and they are here to present, um, I said 90% designs on two of the sites yep. and then 60% uh, design on the on, site. On one of the sites. On one of the sites and then, and then we'll have some discussion about the one site that's kind of questionable at the moment that Chris has had some further thoughts on. It, so. So Chris, I'll, I'll give the floor to you. All right. Um, so I figured we'd start with the two projects that are at 90%. Uh, those have been presented to the select board once before. Mm -hmm. um, really, the, the big difference between these is just we added a bit more detail uh, to the plans at this point um, in terms of elevation information, uh, additional grading that may need to be done, which mm -hmm. is, is very little. Um, but we're actually drew in some grades here to direct flow of, of water the way we want it to. Um, in anticipation of the town finishing up the parking lot and having water flow from the entrance back towards uh, this culvert area, and this is a low spot, um, we have looked at some grading options here and just built just a tiny little one foot urn to direct stormwater into a catch basin here so that way we collect all of the water from the parking lot. Uh, that's the biggest change from the plans from the last time. Uh, this, the stormwater system is still the same. Yes? Which parking lot are you talking about? The elementary, oh I'm sorry, this is the elementary school. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have started there. We're, I'm going to start the elementary school, oh. which has been presented. Um, the two that have been presented so far are the elementary school and behind the fire ants between the annex building and the high school. Okay. Um, so here's the elementary school. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, so I hear, that Chuck, that they're working, you're working on the grading now. Uh, we'll finish it tomorrow. Oh, all right. I was going to go take a look at it. Michael mentioned it earlier. Yeah, we'll take a look uh, at that. We were looking, uh, right I was hoping to have it finished for tonight, but they had a district meeting or something up there, and it was about 45 cars up there. So yeah. Tomorrow there's another meeting, and I get there, and we'll mm -hmm. finish up. All right. So, in anticipation of that, we kind of expect water to flow from here this way um, and into this catch basin, and then anything that may have. Uh, just kind of flow to this grass area here. We just kind of wanted to direct this catch basin and make sure we capture as much of that uh, impervious area, gravel area, um, the pavement that's out by the school, as much of that as we can. So just a, just a little minor grading there. Um, and it might actually help to find the edge of the parking lot a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Um, Chris, I just have a question about that berm. Um, I'm wondering if, in front of the berm, um, where the parking area is, if there was a ditch, um, and Chuck, you would probably have um, some thoughts on this too, that would catch that water from the rest of the parking area, and if the ditch was sloped enough to, to bring the water to the uh, catch basin. This way? Yeah. The, yeah. The whole parking lot is, is going to be sloped. 
tomorrow will be sold to that catfish. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Nobody even knows we're going to be in the burn. I mean, it's okay. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, we can look it over and look at it, but yeah. uh, we've changed but the combustion okay. of the law. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. think it's going to work well. Okay, great. I was just basing on um, the uh, the survey information that I had at this point. Right. I'm not knowing right. how it was going to look ultimately. Yeah, well, so it, for all we know, it looks basically good. what you did. <laughs> it looks good to me, but it looks a lot better tomorrow. Okay, good to know. Uh, so, anyway, that's the whole premise. So, maybe we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the system itself is still the same. We're proposing, I, I'm just trying to see if I can find a brochure. I don't think I had it saved from my email, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not sure I can get at the moment. Um, but they're basically these, uh, I'm trying to think how big they are, they're maybe 20 by 15. They're those square boxes that mm -hmm. are, it's basically just a frame, and all it creates is a void in the ground to let water flow into it, uh, to hold it for a certain amount of time and let it infiltrate into the ground underneath it. Or if it uh, comes up too high within that uh, space, it will have an overflow pipe to flow out of, mm -hmm. uh, which would be these here. These are two overflow pipes, so everything we're anticipating is going to come down by the ball field. Chuck, Chuck also indicated mm -hmm. that they want to redo the, the soil back there. Yeah. Uh, so in a side view <laughs> of it. So that in a, if you took a section right through, if you cut right through the system, uh, it basically looks like this. Water will flow into this catch basin. Uh, sediment would collect down here. Once the water filled up, it would run through this 12 inch pipe and into that void space. There, these, the system's called an R tank system, um, which creates that void space. If it happens to fill up, Past that, back up into the catch basin, and here it will run out these two six inch PVC pipes at the far end. Uh, but anything below that will ultimately flow down into the ground, which is the idea we want to reduce the amount of water that's being mm -hmm. sent uh, from here directly into Kingsbury Brook. Uh, this way, we will attenuate. Some of, the, some of the larger storms, I think this, is, I believe we designed this for the one year storm, which is uh, somewhere in the one to two inch range in mm -hmm. this area mm -hmm. uh, at a time. Um, so the majority of storms, the, they consider the 90 percentile storm, 90 percent storms are less than an inch in Vermont. Um, so more often than not, it uh, you know, will infiltrate mm -hmm. um, all of the water that, that flows into it. Um, it will ultimately end up in the Kingsbury Brook, but it will be through groundwater versus uh, overland flow. Um, and that way, we're taking out uh, any pollutants that could be in there. The main concern for uh, the Kingsbury Branch, the New Spear River, and ultimately Lake Champlain is phosphorus. Uh, that's one of the big reasons these projects are happening, and we want to reduce phosphorus in mm -hmm. the lake ultimately. Um, so, big contributors of that are, are seven. Chemicals or things that may be on the grasses or whatever might be used. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's kind of the overview of, of this project. As I said, we, we added some more some detail in terms of uh, construction work to the plan set, which includes uh, erosion control details and things like that while while we're constructing. Uh, but the overall premise of the project has not changed. Mm -hmm. Um, so silt fencing to keep, to keep any sediment from running off site. Uh, some construction entrances when trucks exit exit the site, we want them to run over that gravel and get the mud off the tires and things like that before it gets out onto um, the main river over the 14 here. Mm -hmm. um, so there was the biggest changes. There was a concern expressed about the underground uh, propane storage tank um, that's. Yes. Um. Yeah, uh, so we placed that in there as, as we thought we, we could find it. Um, I don't know how big it is. 
But the one, the one great thing about these systems mm -hmm. is that they come in modular boxes. So mm -hmm. each one of these little tiny squares is a box mm -hmm. that make up the whole thing. So they can be rearranged if, if we get into the site and that tank is actually over here. We can rearrange this section over here and put it maybe up in one of these corners mm -hmm. um, without too much, you know, without mm -hmm. too much change. Mm -hmm. um, that's one great one thing I really like about the systems mm -hmm. versus uh, the chamber systems that were uh, done in the conceptual design for this. Mm -hmm. Those chamber systems are long tubes that sit under the ground mm -hmm. wherever they go. Mm -hmm. That's go, yeah. or if you run into something, uh, there's not that much flexibility mm -hmm. to move them. Mm -hmm. um, so some of these, you could just move part of the tanks. They don't have to be in this specific configuration. Yeah, looks good to me. Looks good um, to me, yeah. A couple of questions that had come up last time, I think, were, was there concerns of any twisting or anything like that, due to ground movement? And I talked to the main, uh, I talked to the manufacturer about it, and they, had, they hadn't heard of any issues of that mm -hmm. uh, happening. So, uh, so freeze thaw is not going to be an issue with mobilization? No, not typically. Um, yeah. I think usually when these are used, the, the soils are very well, uh, well drained. You know, well drained. Yeah. Uh, so when there's a storm, they drain out pretty well. Uh, What's the longevity of, do they figure the long, what is the longevity of that system? Uh, I would imagine it would last as long as any PVC system, any PVC pipe that's out there, so 50, 100 years, I would imagine. Um, it's going to depend on maintenance. Uh, the one nice thing about the system is it, it will be wrapped in a, in a mesh, um, like a mesh fabric. Mm -hmm. So even that piping coming in from the catch basin there will have a piece of mesh in front of it. That, uh, the pipe will be butted right up against that, so most of that sediment will be stopped either in the catch basin or in the pipe itself. When we talked about changing the size of the catch basin so we can clean it when that's the way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that is that should be reflected in here. I think it's five by five. Okay. Five by five square catch basin. Yep. So then you can the bucket to get right in there. Um, yeah. one side and then the other. Right. Did you have a question? Yeah. What about freezing? Uh, these are, <clears throat> this one's going to be um, set well into the ground. It'll be at least three, three feet to five feet into the ground. Um, so that freeze thaw uh, shouldn't affect the, uh, the ground. Is there a there? What's that? No. No, 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 no. It's going to be, it's it's gonna be sitting three, at least three feet above bedrock. Yeah. yeah. That should lead you out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as our, Ms. Mandy, as far as our estimates for the valley, that section is, we've got like at least 40 meters to bedrock. So we've got quite a way before we get to bedrock. Yeah, we get some hard stuff. You, you'll you hit till. You'll hit till, for sure. At about seven and a half feet. Yeah, you'll hit till, for sure. But you won't hit bedrock in the valley yeah. here until the swale, which is up system for me. So. Mm -hmm. The three that you had up after this one that had the long grid on it? Yeah. So that's, uh, so if you um, took a cut right through here and looked at it vertically, that's like, what that is depicting. So, um, it's like a cross section, Robin, of yeah, the tank. Okay, that one right there, you said on the far right side of that, there is, that's going to be the outflow. If there yeah. is a need for outflow. Yes. Oh, is there a meter on that so you know how much water is coming out of there? If we're letting too much water out, how does that get adjusted? Well, um, you can't adjust it. That's for like a hundred year storm. Oh. Yeah, those are for those are for larger storms. Oh, okay. uh, two ten year storms, which um, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but generally you're looking at more than two inches in a Oh, okay. is what this is sized for. It's sized for somewhere in the two inch range. Okay. Where those shouldn't be activated yet. And that that overflow will run into a swale that pretty much goes along the outside of the field <coughs> over at the school. 
and we'll eventually down into the, the wetland area. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it should be pretty well cleaned up for you. Yeah. So yeah. it's not it's not metered. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions about the ninety percent design? Okay. So we can move on to the move on. next one. So this one is a fire annex. Um, I've had some discussions with Chuck a little bit about this one. Uh, so we we updated for this plan we updated to show the latest grading here and the retaining wall that currently exists, uh, along with the uh, existing uh, swale is mm -hmm. there to the point where it's at. It's the regret point swale. Um, it's just adjusted. This is in the existing condition now, uh, which just shows a grass area up here. Uh, on the next page you'll see this is a very similar uh, system with the R tanks. Uh, the one thing about it is it's much more shallow. So because of the change in elevation from the elementary school down to the fire mm. annex by, uh, by the river, we found groundwater to be much higher. Um, and the requirement based on the stormwater standards in the state is you have to be three feet above groundwater. Mm -hmm. So if one day we were to have to go back and maybe permit these sites, we want to make sure that they're able to be permitted without an issue, without having to go back or change anything. Um, so we, put the, we set these three feet above groundwater. Unfortunately, groundwater is about uh, five and a half feet or so, which doesn't give us a whole lot of room. So this system is uh, a lot smaller. Like I said, the other ones are probably 15 inches tall. These ones are going to be about nine inches tall, but they're a lot stronger, so they can still handle uh, any of the truck traffic that, that would be used. Um, so the the tanker tracks or uh, the groomers that make all those, so the mm -hmm. snowmobile trails. Um, and, and they'll be buried about a foot, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, one foot with eight, with a nine inch. So this one looks much shallower. Uh, the one thing that we added from this, we had talked about overflow. So in the other, the other our tank system, the overflow was through the system. Um, this one, if we need to overflow, we're actually going to let it run over the catch basin or through the catch basin and out a swale down the wall here, mm -hmm. past the ice rink. Um, we so, continue that as we're grabbing lines. So where is that one actually going to be placed? So the system is going to be placed right in the, the current roadway out to the ice rink. Okay. So it's. So the dragway that goes out past the, the fire annex is here, and then just out in that grass area along the river, uh, in between the annex and the ice rink. Okay. This is where the system will be here. And have you been over there lately? I have not. Uh, I, didn't, I came over, I walked over when I was here in May or April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has well, it changed a little bit? A lot. Okay. Uh, we've tipped the road. Of course, we're going to capture all the water up to the school that's going in the first. Yep. And we've tipped the road, changed the contour of it, and put an open silt pond on the far side of the road. Okay. So I'm wondering where's the water going to come from to go in that one? The. Yeah, and so that was one of the big questions that I, that I actually wanted to bring up. I, I brought it up a little bit with Chuck beforehand, and I think I mentioned it with Michael. Was, um, that with all the changes here, we're actually losing quite a bit of the area that is actually going to this one, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it a lot more expensive per treated area. Right. Uh, which, was, which was kind of the, the thing that made me a little hesitant to do this. So basically, we'd be capturing an area that is somewhere in here, part of the road, up 
Uh, so the road is all set, so it goes to the far side now. The road's all set to go that way now? Yes. Okay, it, goes I into a, it goes into a silt pump. Yeah, right here? Right there. Yeah. And then it's got to be okay. four and a half feet deep before the, the spillway. Yeah. All right, so if that whole road is tipped there, then it's really just going to be this area here, which it, the original idea was to have probably half the parking lot right. here and here. So right. actually, from what I have, it sounds like it got even smaller because I did have a portion of the road associated with that, which is getting us to, you know, we were looking at maybe half a pound of phosphorus a year. Yeah. So whatever the price is, basically per pound, it's double that. Mm -hmm. um, the price for that one, we have it. Sixty-five thousand, I would say, including construction oversight, a contingency, uh, which you know, then you're looking at hundred plus per. Mm. So this one, this one, I have a hard time with just, I mean, just looking at it as mm -hmm. uh, from an economic standpoint, I have mm -hmm. a hard time proposing this one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but this is what this is what we had come up with initially. And yeah. Then Based, on, based on some changes, now it doesn't necessarily seem like it's mm -hmm. yep. the most ideal situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, that one there doesn't impress me much. The one up in the school, I like. This yeah. one here yeah. seems yeah. like a waste of time and money. And yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, experience the capturing now, hopefully. Yeah, the conditions of the road and the runoff have been, you've changed that from, from when this was. Yeah. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. you should look at it first before you agree. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I'll, I'll go around and look at it uh, after I leave here. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Being so close to the being so close to the groundwater interface, also, I mean, it has the potential to, to just be a non-functioning system really fast. It, it could. I mean, uh, you know, it's I mean, on the soils. They still drain. They still pretty they, well. they drain all right, but in high storm events. They tend yeah. to actually move a lot of sediment in the tilt. And so you can flux like a tremendous amount of drift into those. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah. it just it just might be a little bit too close to that surface water groundwater interface. Right. And three feet is right. yeah, pretty yeah. trivial. Yeah, and that's why for a lot of you just want it to, to bypass, to bypass it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, the way it's set, set up now, that stone, Spillway you got down through there should never get used. There shouldn't be any water there. Yeah. Mm. If, we, right. if, if we've done our job the way we should have, and I think we have. Okay. Mm. Good enough. Well, you're an engineer. You can tell better when you look at it. But. I will. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, press on. And you guys can uh, you decide what you. You know, it may be at this point um, that something like this should be on the other side of the road because um, that catch basin, you know, the stone line thing is pretty close to the Kingsbury branch. Um, there may, I don't know if I'll let Chris look at it, but. Well, which, yeah, uh, we've looked, we've had. Some pretty critical dump waters, and it hasn't overflowed yet. Okay. I've been monitoring it very close to make yeah. sure that the spillway has been used. Okay. And it hasn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you, is that? Which, which? Right over Just here. across from there. Yeah. So you'll see right. that. When, when you go yeah. over, you'll, you'll see what they've done. Yeah. yeah. You can look at, I've been over there every time it rains, and you can look at the stone, and there's no silt in the stone going out of the spillway. Yeah. It's all been right contained in the pond. Mm -hmm. And there is room enough we could enlarge that pond. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, the road crew has been busy over there this summer. So. Yeah, the road crew has been busy everywhere this summer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. All right, so this uh, post office is the next one. This is at mm -hmm. 60%. Um, and so the original conceptual design 
um, similar to all the others, was uh, a chamber system Let's see if I can pull this where up. they wanted water to infiltrate, um, not knowing 100% where the uh, groundwater uh, level was. Um, and this one we found when we did the investigation that groundwater was only about four feet, which with the three feet gives us about a foot to work with. So even with the, the depth that the R tanks can be constructed at, at that nine inch height, um, you know, doesn't give us a whole lot of room. So we, we proposed something different, which would, uh, you know, could be used and actually go into the groundwater as if it's lined. So we, we would line it to make sure that water stays in, doesn't mingle with the groundwater, then it would be treated and sent out through uh, an outlet structure. Uh, that would be a, a subsurface gravel outlet. Um, for this project, how would you treat that? A sub subsurface gravel wetland. Uh, I'll get into that in just in just a minute. Um, okay. For this portion of the project, because it is so close to the river, uh, the the river folks have indicated that we need to stay within existing infrastructure, uh, meaning we can't go any closer than either than either the fire department building or the post office or uh, in this case, it's actually the, uh, the uh, piece of infrastructure that gets us the closest to the river would be the, uh, the well for mm -hmm. the two buildings here. Um, so we, we uh, know that the well is here, but we've been told that the water line comes in somewhere in this corner. The here. water line might deviate some, the power lines you can measure yeah. it's corner to corner. But. Right. Um, water line, no, no, no detail. We we don't know a whole lot. Yes, you're right. So so we have, so yeah, actually we have the power line that we know. Yeah. Because um, that got replaced ten years ago. Uh, so for this one, the subsurface gravel wetlands. Uh, basically, how those work is you're creating you're creating a wetland. Um, it's a, a mini pond, a, a mini basin where it has, it's filled with wetland plants. Um, it, there shouldn't be any standing water after a storm event after about 24 hours or so. So the, the risk of mosquitoes and things like that um, mm -hmm. at the 40, 48, 72 hour mark, those, those remain pretty minimal. Um, but, what it, but what we create with underneath the, the layer the soil layer where all the wetland plants are is a gravel um, storage chamber, mm -hmm. essentially. Similar to the R tanks, but it's made out of gravel, so you just have a little bit, a little less space to work with uh, for the water to sit in. But water will travel down through either the wetland soils or in higher flow storms, a set of pipes where it will be transported directly to the gravel. It travels horizontally through the gravel uh, area, and then it's treated, it comes into an outlet structure, and then out. Um, and most of the time, these are two bay systems, so it goes into the first bay, it's treated through the first bay, piped, uh, collected in, in some piping, transported to the second bay, spread out again into a second gravel layer, and then into that. Um, so this is what I've come up with here, Using that power line from the corner of the fire, uh, from the corner of the fire station to that well, uh, and staying within that, this is what the footprint would be here. Uh, it is only a foot deep. We're, we're trying not, trying not to get too deep here. Uh, underneath that is is a little bit deeper. Um, so what we're proposing is some sort of. Uh, catch basin here where water would be funneled into the catch basin, sediment can be pulled out from that. We want to have a you know, four foot uh, sump in there to capture sediment. Um, and then water would run through here. Uh, what that looks like in a profile view, 
similar here would be water running into into this catch basin here over over the parking lot. It set uh, sediment falls in here. It outlets right directly onto the wetland soil. So there would just be there would be a little uh, shallow gravel pad here just to make sure that we don't erode those soils too much, if any, if at all. Uh, you can see the, these two thin lines here uh, are the piping that I mentioned that go vertical into the gravel layer. Um, this is our gravel layer here where all that water is going to be stored. It would travel from this section across through the gravel, would get recollected in a pipe here. If I go back up, this would be that pipe. It would be perforated so that water would make it in, collected, travel over, and then it would travel through one one set of pipes or one pipe here, uh, and then redistributed through a perforated pipe here. And it would run horizontally and be recollected at another perforated pipe and be sent into this catch basin. So how close to the back of the post office will this be located? So that distance there, I believe, is about 15 feet. So the parking area would still be? This, the parking area would be still OK. Probably. Yeah, this is, this is the edge of the parking area here. Yeah, and it's not from you to there. So about where the edge of the yeah, gravel about where the, where the ground the in. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that is, there should be enough room still in her. And you know that set the tank in the windshield right there, right? I was not made aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. The septic tank is right under that where the postal is right under here. Uh yeah, yeah, closer towards the fire station. Over here, right there. In the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, and the leaf field is. And the leaf field is right back there, too. Yeah. Oh, goodness. And, how and that's all insulated before it started from I had to do that three years ago. So. <laughs> okay, great. And that's and how probably close, <laughs> How close do you have to stay away from the little road that comes down off the cabin road? That's on the other side of the post office. Yeah, so it's over here. That's on the other side of the post oh, office okay. over here. So I haven't gotten any closer there. Um, same, it's the same using the infrastructure of the, of the uh, existing infrastructure. So Chuck, do you know where that leach so, field is? Uh, I mean, based on what he's saying, it's probably right here. Uh -huh. The septic tank is right off the corner of the post office. Yeah. Seven or eight feet. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, down towards, down right in there. Right there. Yeah. And the leaf field, that means the leaf field is over here. It's right, right, right in there somewhere. I, admit, I haven't right. been into the leaf field. I've been into the septic tank and fixed the line coming out uh -huh. of all time. All right. Oh, that was, uh, no. That could create a challenge. Something that hadn't come up in, in the discussions of right, so you know, what's out there. I was I was not aware. Well, and the other issue you could run into is all the snow from all the yard gets plowed into that area. Is that going to work? Uh, we'd have to probably put the snow somewhere else. Yes. We have to. Where are you going to yeah, put it? This was. You'd this one was going to be no place left to put everything. Yeah, everything everything from here and yeah. all goes down there. Yeah. yeah. So we going to do a truck at all? You're going to have yeah. to every storm if you if you put that in. That ain't gonna work. Yeah. There's no one. But so. Talking about the this back wall where the ice rink is again, right? I don't think the snow is an issue up there because it's underground. The system's underground. This so, is an open yeah, system. Yeah, shouldn't be an issue up there. The set, that whole system's underground. They can put snow right on top of that. Yeah. So piling all that snow over top of it that, doesn't hurt. That shouldn't hurt. It. No. Okay. But this area is okay, open. This area is basically open. <clears throat> So I, I just with the infrastructure of 
the existing infrastructure and trying to fit it in here. That's a real understood. challenge, yeah. I understood that this was going to be a challenge. The mm -hmm. groundwater prevents, pre yeah. presents a whole other challenge of, of, of trying, you know, with infiltration, which doesn't really make it possible. Mm -hmm. um, and this was another alternative that I figured I'd at least provide. Mm -hmm. um, if this does not work, then uh, I think Grace and Town can choose not to go forward with, with yeah. the project here. Um, mm -hmm. and I, Could the, this whole uh, um, wetland area be smaller, or, or would that affect the leach field, um, even if it was in close proximity? I, I don't know who the relationship, how that would work with the, the leach field, of, um, if it was... It, it could be smaller. Um, it's not going to be functional if it's much smaller. Yeah, okay. I mean, so, I mean it's not going to be very functional if it's any smaller. It, no, it will, yeah, it will it, provide, the, the it will provide the, less treatment than the 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 you intend that you want. Um, it's just not really going to be able to do its job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we could size it for the water quality event, which is that 90, which is the 90%, the, the 90 yeah. storm. Um, yeah. It's too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that along with that, along with doing this, um, most of these treatment systems that, that are um, being done for Lake Champlain are being done to the water quality volume. Um, mm -hmm. But part of the town of Woodbury's uh, interest in this was also to reduce some of those higher flow zones, of, at least kind of reducing the volume of runoff to the Kingsbury Brook. Right. Uh, because of some flooding issues. Yeah, it was a mitigation issue. Mm -hmm. so, um, and with, with the swale so, there in the paving between the um, fire station and the post office, anytime there's flooding here in the village, you know, that's a major mm -hmm. flowage area right into the Kingsbury branch. Um, oh, and you never stop all that water. No, you won't flood that no, water. Uh, no. <coughs> well, we built in a floodplain yeah. on the state. And I will say the original. According to the Fed, it's not. I will go back and say the original conceptual plan had the infiltration chambers underneath right. the parking lot. Yeah. Um, obviously, we, we still have the groundwater issue, but everything was underneath the parking lot, mm -hmm. and that was before we went and paid that uh, yeah. paid last year. So that kind of took that out of the equation as well, even putting something up mm -hmm. there. Although I think it's my understanding that if we did have to tear up any pavement, that there might be funding to repave it once the infiltration basin was in. Okay. Not, not a system like this? No, not a system like this, but the original uh, conception was to have some more of those, uh, those box kind of... Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, now, now finding out how shallow the groundwater is, it yeah. is that. Yeah, a tough solution, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, part of this, I really question the original survey and, and some of the work that was done that kind of, you know, it seems like some of these things should have been found out right from the beginning. Um, so it just kind of makes me wonder about the original survey that was done, of the, the, um, where basically we were given 30% designs and, and sites were picked out. Um, and prioritized, which, you know, the four here in the village. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it seems like over by the church and the church street thing, it seems like they should have detected the ledge there with, you know, in the original survey. Um, so, if, right. and some of these, it just feels like we're kind of been led down um, a, a path where there really isn't a solution. Um, so, Unfortunately, yes. Yes. Yeah, um, kind of frustrating. And yeah, I heard a kind of, I, I, I think it was an anecdotal story um, about doing that, some of that stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, it just happened that the test kits couldn't be done on the day that they were scheduled right. with an excavator. Because um, mm -hmm. uh, the town had gotten a, like a snowstorm the yeah. day before or something. They were, yep. they were busy cleaning up, cleaning up roads. Mm -hmm. And some of these test kits were done by hand just to figure out what the soils were. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily looking for the ledge. 
Yeah, so the, the, the receptive system. Yeah. You wouldn't want to find that with the excavator, though. <laughs> that was the unfortunate uh, outcome of some yeah. So it looks like this is another area where there really isn't a solution that'll work with the infrastructure that's there. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the Kingsbury branch is right there. It's really right there. Yeah, there's really not much room. No. Okay. <laughs> there you go on that one. <laughs> All right. And then, so that was three of the four. Um, as we were just discussing, <coughs> the church, the original Church Street site was going to be uh, right next to the church on the north side, um, between the church itself and Church Street. Uh, the original design, again, was chamber systems, thinking infiltration. When we came and did uh, test pits uh, back in well, May of 20, you know, it, was a year. it was like April Over a year ago, yeah. or yeah. so, uh, just after everything had started happening with COVID. Um, we went out there and we found that ledge next to the church is about three feet or so, mm -hmm. maybe a little less. Uh, which obviously given ledge or groundwater we have to be three feet above that uh, basically doesn't provide any room to do any infiltration there. So we started looking at alternatives for that site uh, to try and capture the same area. If we looked at an aerial view of this, uh, this is kind of, this is a little bit zoomed out, um, but Part of that Church Street site over here was going to capture water coming off of uh, the hill up on Cabot Road, part on, partly on Cabot Road here, the, what's collected in these catch basins uh, on either side of Cabot Road and directed directly to the Kingsbury branch. Um, they wanted to tie into that, those piping systems and grab that water directly from there after it had already been captured. Um, if we, we originally asked the owner of uh, this grass area over here if we could investigate his property um, just over across the street here, uh, if we could put in, if we could look at maybe putting something in subsurface again so he can keep it as a grass area and he can still have whatever uses he would like for it. Um, ultimately, we were told that we couldn't. So, the, the other alternative we came up with was looking at a uh, lot directly across the street. Um, I think it's a little, a little park area, yeah, yeah. a little park. Um, so we did an investigation there. Um, that, one, that happened earlier this year, back in April, and we dug down eight feet without hitting a ledge. Uh, we didn't we encountered groundwater at the very bottom, so it was about, I want to say seven feet, 10 inches, seven feet, 11 inches. So that gives us some uh, depth to work with if we would like, if we want to put in an infiltration practice there, uh, similar to what's up at the elementary school. Um, this plan here, uh, oh, the other thing is we would utilize the existing basin that's there, it's the gravel land basin just on the upper side of that lot, just at the bottom of the hill. Um, what we have come up with for a potential alternative for this one, um, we haven't designed anything, we've just done a preliminary sizing uh, to try and determine whether or not we want to move forward with this one. Um, we came up with an area that would be captured, which is this thick line here, which is not a significant amount of impervious. It's, it's a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just what, just less than an acre, maybe. 
maybe it's a half an acre. Um, I uh, I actually have that email that I sent. I think it was 0.74 acres. What was it? I point seven four acres. This is the email that I had sent. Um, the impervious was approximately a quarter acre, um, and we would size the infiltration practice. The, the practice would have us an, appro an approximate storage volume equal to the one that we had sized over at the annex. Um, obviously, it would be different. We have more room to work with, so it's not those nine inch deep ones. It's more more like the ones up at the elementary school. Um, it would do. A little less than a pound of phosphorus removal per year, uh, and a couple hundred pounds of sediment removal, uh, estimated at this point. Uh, and that's that's just um, an approximate sizing. We haven't have done uh, an exact you know modeling yet for this, mm -hmm. but that was just a, a kind of a base sizing. Uh, and we would put that system. We would basically take. Uh, a pipe, we would pipe the water from, from this basin here to the proposed infiltration practice, which would be in this area. Um, just to see if we could capture any more and get um, more cost benefit out of it. Um, I thought about potentially adding a catch basin here, which could capture some additional area uh, from the property uh, on the northern side of Cabin Road. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a garage, there's a garage here, a house here. Um, most of this would run directly off into uh, the, uh, what's that, the Buck Lake, Buck Lake Road. Brooklyn, yeah. yeah. Uh, most of that would run off here, but there's a small portion, uh, pretty much that whole parking area, we think, uh, and part of, part of the garage as well as, as the house, we would be able to capture. Um, in that if we piped it over across the street back in that and kind of redirected some. Uh, with that, was that second scenario, we get closer to an acre, another tenth of an acre uh, of impervious treated, um, just over an acre, or just over a pound of phosphorus removal, um, and potentially a few hundred pounds of sediment loading, just based on uh, the, the type of land covers that are out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so yeah, what's the total cost of something like this? Say that one right there. This one here? Yeah. Uh, I believe, what did I say? Uh, it would be in a similar, I said, uh, in my email, I indicated it would be a similar cost range to the fire station, which I think I had around. Uh, a sixty to seventy thousand dollars for that one. Is that the annex building? Is that that's the annex, annex building? building. Yeah. So again, it's it's not uh, as much uh, as the initial design was. Right. But we're trying to maximize it as much as we can to get yeah. to get that. Um, so that that's what we've come up with at this point. It, it would. Be a similar system. If we if we move forward with this option, um, for right now we're kind of looking at alternatives. That would have, how do we want to approach this? Mm -hmm. um, is the kind of interested in digging up the little park over there? Um, yeah, I mean, my feeling is that it really wouldn't capture that much, and, and of course, the whole Church Street component of it would be. Not even in the picture at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, m my feeling at the moment is that the the one viable um, system is the the one on the at the school in the school parking area. Seems like the others have. That's this one. If you were to go ahead and listen to the park. Uh, what would you have to do that? I believe the septic tank in the leach field is still in there from that old building. It's never been removed as far as I know. Yeah, I can't hear It has not been removed as far as I know. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So I that's going to have to be estimated out, right? 
We, uh, if we hit it, we would definitely excavate that out. Um, hey, you, there ain't no way you're not gonna hit it. You're gonna hit it. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, depending on where we locate, if we push it, I think um, what had been indicated is it's in this area generally. Yeah. If we, if we, right if we potentially kept kept further forward on the property, maybe area. we don't hit that. Mm -hmm. But then your capture volumes go down even more. Not necessarily, because we're, we're not, uh, I haven't considered anything in here. It's still trying to pipe from, from what's captured in that uh, <coughs> store that's right. essentially set in the basin that's there now. Um, I, I actually, uh, haven't considered anything from from overlay flow if if, um, if it's underground and we don't put any additional mm -hmm. cache basins in there, okay. uh, then we don't necessarily have we're not necessarily going to capture it. Capture it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So can I throw a wild card? Hypothetically, we get a heavy rainstorm. Some beaver dams give the whole town's flooded again. Is it going to hypothetically we do the one in the park and a small one by the annex? Are they just going to get uprooted if, if we get another flood like that? Well, we will get another flood. It's just a question of when. Yeah, I know. I mean, but they won't get uprooted. What will happen is they'll fill full. Of they'll fill full of so, yeah. And yeah. then yeah. what? Then you got to estimate them up and redo them. And then you get them And then we start. And then we have to start over. Yeah. And the grants for these, are they an 80-20 match individually or is it a... The implementation grants, I would guess that it would either be 75-25 or 80-20 or, or maybe 90-10, but um, we haven't even gotten there yet, so I don't, I don't know what they would do. What's that, Grace? You said it would depend on the funding source. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, to me the only, I mean, the only really viable one um, is at the school, is the, at the one the school at school parking school. area. Um, I can see that one working myself. I can see that one working very well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's too bad the village is where it is in a sense. You know, well, it's just clustered and everything's boom, boom, boom. And when you yeah, think about septics and leach fields, it's all right here. Yeah, and There's this is where the you here. know the we're on slate and, and gray. We're in the low spot. Yeah. And this is where the you know the flooding happened. There's going to be, I mean, every at least every ten years, and sometimes more, we have we major ex flooding events. Yeah. So that's that's the real pressure. Yeah. Trying so if to do we did get a major flood like that, would those containers, whatever, be able to be cleaned out, or they have to be totally replaced and once put in? They, uh, they what we can do. Um, as we construct these, what they like, uh, what the manufacturer can do is create an isolator row. So it's basically that pipe goes into one row that is easily cleaned. Uh, the one row has, it can have a hole through the, through the box where everything is and they can go in and um, at least clean out that row and that would be isolated from the rest of it, um, which would make it easier to clean that mm. way. So it flushed out like that? Yeah. Be back there. Yeah, it would, be, it, would be, it would be back there. Yeah. 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 It's a horizontal row. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that we, they do also provide with this is um, monitoring ports that go down into mm -hmm. the uh, into the system. To the so you can see what's, you can get an idea what's happening. Right, do we have yeah. a whole bunch of stuff built up or not? That's the ones with the boxes. I have, you don't have anything to monitor the ones in the gravel. The uh, ground alone? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, well, technically, yes, you do. The, 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 the vertical pipes that go in, those, those can be used as well. Mm -hmm. You can it's do it based on the percolation rate and sediment influx and things like that, but it's not going to be as, certainly as... No, it's not as easy. As easy. Mm -hmm. But those can be used for that. Yeah. So how much silt or verbiage or whatever you want to call it do we actually, from Woodbury, get into Lake Champlain? Um, I think that depends on the, the velocity of the river really, how much, uh, 
the, uh, the how fine the cells are and how long they sell, or, or how long it takes them to sell out. But it, it kind of depends, I think, on the weather and how much gets stirred up during each storm, because eventually it, it will make it there. It's just a matter of it's going to settle as it travels downstream, and then the next storm, it's going to uh, it's going to stir up some stuff, and so over time it gets there. Yeah. Yeah. But this are the best monitoring rates we have for the are in the Winooski for us. Not Champlain. So we can see the sudden influx in the Winooski before it reaches the nearest trunk stream. Okay. That's where we can monitor some of those volumes. In terms of the input of this drainage area into Lake Champlain overall, there's absolutely no way in it. Okay. And you know, most of the Lake Champlain gravel erosion either settles first in the brook in the wetland down below the village right. and then probably Woodbury Lake, Woodbury Lake itself. Okay. so it, it, in, a, in a way it affects our area much more than it would um, Lake Champlain. Yeah. Okay. I mean Br Brian has mentioned that the brook behind his place that it used to be the sediment on the bottom used to be much lower he was you know there's a couple of bridges behind his shop and so you know the, the sediment in the brook there used to be quite a bit lower. So you know these different flooding events that we've had, a good part of it pretty much just deposits in the brook bottom. And then you know the, we, we're lucky in a way, and Lake Champlain is lucky in a way that we have this large wetland area, which is a, a natural filter. filter. Um, so I mean that helps considerable, I think. Um, but. Yeah. I mean, when the last flooding, that water was pretty brown. Oh, was, well, the, in Irene, that brook filled all the way to the top. It, yeah. it took 10 or 15, 10 millilobes out of the brook back here. Yeah. So. Like, we're not talking about a little bit. We're talking like a lot. A mountain. Right. Yeah. Like it yeah. filled it. Yeah. So. Um, the estimates we provide are, are based on research that has been done by institutions such as UNH and, and things like uh, and entities of that nature where they may go out and they try and measure specific land covers and, and determine you know, per acre how much sediment is there is actually coming off um, any, in any given year uh, <coughs> from each individual one. So we try and use that information to the best of our ability and to estimate that information. Uh, but it would be really hard to say for certain how much it actually comes out of the town yeah. uh, on any given storm. Depends on how many of you have That too. <laughs> <laughs> Off subject, has there been any motion from the state as far as fixing that number, even where it's all in? Yeah, they, they, have, they have a FEMA grant in process to, to change that. Point. Nothing really solid. They yeah. basically haven't looked at it that much. Yeah. They're working on something. It's, and it, even it's, with those, those that are close to the house, mm -hmm. they're not even, that's crazy. Well, no, they're, they have agreed to fix the... Oh, they have, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. they agreed to fix it. Yeah, but <clears throat> they haven't yet, but they agreed, to, you know, because it looked like it was runoff from Route 14 that caused the erosion around those granite blocks yeah. to, to have them drop yeah. in the stream. So they have agreed to fix that. We didn't make this easy. He's used to it. There's a lot of water in Woodbury. That's all right. Yeah, I've, I've seen the pictures. Michael sent me a fair few from a storm mm -hmm. a few years ago. Looks like there's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. So, do we feel that we should go ahead with the school parking lot basin and, like and let these others go? Is that? I feel like that one is. That one will work. The others yeah, just, I think, are. We're not getting much bang for our buck, and I think they're going to just plug right, right up because I've seen four or five major floods that would have filled them since mm -hmm. I've been here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just don't think that we have the space for it. Or and to put even a small one in and have it fill up, and we could have a flood in the spring, right. and it's done. We got to mm -hmm. do it over. Mm -hmm. And our yeah. bedrock to groundwater interaction here is funky. Yeah. Right. So, okay. but that place works. But that one mm -hmm. works, yep. Mm -hmm.
Michael, when you say the others, you also mean the capital one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I just don't, don't see, that see getting it's just a, it's a small area for the amount of money that this town would spend. And, you know, uh, most of that road is paved, so there's, you know, I mean, that doesn't do anything about the phosphorus, but um, as far as, uh, you know, road runoff, like gravel, um, it, there really isn't much that happens from, from that area that, that Chris has mapped out as the drainage for there, so. Yeah, my feeling is is to let go of the the three um, the church the one we call Church Street, um, the one between the post office and the fire station, and the, and it sounds like the road crew has kind of solved the um, runoff for the um, annex building also. It's working real well. I, in the annex building, there's no way that the lower end of this this end of the annex building. There's no way the water's gonna go the other way. Okay, yeah. It's gonna have to come towards the brook. Mm -hmm. yep. Unless you put a pump station in or something, and then yeah. you got a can of worms in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, please, please, please let's do that. And, you know, as far as the water running to the other side of um, the Valley Lake Road, um, sounds like the catch basin that's been put in place is is doing the, the work so far. So far it's been working fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we had that, that big rain uh, three, four weeks ago and it, it torrentially downpoured mm -hmm. all night. And yep. Yeah, we got over two inches with that storm. At four o'clock in the morning, there was still six inches left of the silt pond and at eight o'clock in the morning, there was about nine inches. So mm -hmm. yeah. I thought it was doing well. Yeah. And there is room there is room there in the town right away. We could expand the size of that if we needed mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we lined it, rip wrapped it. It's right up to standard. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I would hate to see it just left by the wayside for something that's going to cost a tremendous amount of money. Right. Yeah. 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 So I guess I guess we're just looking at the at the one. Um, uh, off the of school parking lot. Is, is that kind of? Yeah, I don't really see that we have a lot of alternatives yeah. that are good. I think, uh, I think uh, we, should, yeah. we should focus on that one. It's, yeah. right. it's an important area. It has broad functionality. Yeah. Uh, I will mention, and I, I, we haven't focused on that. I will say I haven't even focused on this because of all the, the other issues. Um, mm -hmm. There was a part of the Church Street site on. Um, the church street side mm -hmm. on the opposite side of the brook mm -hmm. uh, to put in a sediment basin that was part of the conceptual uh -huh. plan yeah. to, to capture sediment obviously off that road. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you want to continue with? That is on the other side of the church street. On the other side of the brook on church street on the south side. Oh would it be on Ron's or Sergeant's? Yeah, I think it would be on Sergeant's Brook. Yeah, on Bill Ron, it was going to be on the other side of the road. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So. It's on, it's on this side. This on the church side. Of behind the church. church. So, that would, on the opposite, uh, so that would be Ron, that would be Ron's property, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was in the conceptual design. Okay. I don't know. That's not what you can take. No, I don't think so. But I'll throw that up there if, if you want to consider that. Uh, it sounds like it, it's um, what Chuck just did on Valley Lake was yeah. something similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess we'd have to see how, what, how the property owner felt about that. It was on his property. My feeling right now is it probably wouldn't be that big a problem, but yeah. Um, it not depends on how big the how big the sediment pond was. Yeah, I can't remember the exact cubic or the exact footprint size of it. Right. Well, to this point, I hadn't, I hadn't focused on yeah. that. If, if you could send us that information, we yeah. could um, share it with the property owner. Does that sound yeah. like yeah. a plausible plan? Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. do that tomorrow. Okay. I don't, let me say, I mean, just listening here, I wouldn't think that it would be that big a problem. <clears throat> right. Then again, you know who we're dealing with. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll explore that, and, and I think um, 
probably that does something. if we have the uh, sense of the size, um, perhaps Chuck would be able to talk to the property owner. I will. And, um, and if, if he's okay with it, then we'll, I guess we could give the go-ahead to for a Well, design. basically, I'm guessing it's going to be basically in the town right away. I, don't, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine it being that big. Right. It probably may, might be the same size as the one they created on, on the others. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm, we get the yeah. information, I'll definitely okay. bring it up on top of it. Okay. Yeah, so we'll... Okay. we'll Pursue that. So I, you know, I kind of feel like I should apologize that you know we've done all this work and these systems haven't really seemed. But you wouldn't know. Plausible. If you try and look at. Yeah, it. I mean, I, I feel badly in a way that that um, you know we've used grant money to come to a dead end, um, but I guess that probably happens. Um, um, and I, you know, I kind of wonder a little bit about the original proposals. But if, um, but that's water over the dam, I guess, yeah. right? So, yeah. Anything else that Grace or? I'm good, thank share? you. All right. Guess we're set. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, Chris, do you need any help on plugging from that thing? I think so. I think I just unplugged. Yeah, just unplug and um, turn for help. I think I'm supposed to let this thing run for a while um, before I shut it off so that the uh, the lens and the light can cool. I've got to turn them on. I'm leaving my glasses and just light them off. That happens when you turn it out. Well, with this one, there's a. Uh, The other door is a better door to go out of space. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, town clerk's report. I have been doing land recordings solo. Mm hmm. Uh huh. And have done it, just check them over after I get it all done. Mm hmm. So far, so good. So good. Okay, good. <laughs> And since June, the little town of Woodbury has issued four marriage licenses. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. And I have sent out the checklist to the BCA members for the purging of the checklist. And hopefully right. the three of you have gotten I got one. one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. E either, either night is fine for me. Okay. So. Did I'll you have a different... Does it make a difference with you, Paul? Which it's night for you? September 1st. The first to September 8th. They're Wednesdays. I think they're Wednesday evenings. Uh, let's see. The, either one of those could work for me. Okay. So I'm just waiting to hear back from the Justice of the Peace to see which nights will work with them, and then I'll send out an email and let everybody know. So um, we'll be basically going over the list, and, and if anybody has any thoughts on someone who might not live in town anymore or be alive okay. anymore, that's that's that what we're doing. Okay. Challenge letter. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So I have made some notes on some of the names I saw there. But. Okay. And I um, attended a Zoom meeting with Washington Lamoille County clerks last Thursday mm -hmm. on the purging and they seem to be doing, I mean, I seem to be doing the same thing they were doing, so mm -hmm. I felt good about that. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And that's basically what I have. Okay. And how how often is that checklist uh, reviewed like that? I don't remember that happening. It's supposed to be the odd years from elections. Okay. So So it's supposed to happen every two years. Every two years. On the off year, okay. On the yep. off year, okay. Yep. So apparently it wasn't happening. I don't know. I, maybe I just... <laughs> well, the Board of Civil Authority wasn't meeting. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't remember it. But, but maybe I just missed the email. I don't know. <laughs> um, any questions at all for Robin from anybody? And we're okay. going to measure that flagpole tomorrow. We'll get some help, so hopefully we'll get you another. Okay. Yeah, well, I was going to ask... Thing, the rope that's on that flagpole... If you could let me know if you think that's a standard rope or if that's something that somebody said, oh, oh looks, here I have this Yeah, rope. I think somebody, I have this rope is what it looks like. <laughs> it's a little thin, it's real hard to deal with. Okay. So I need to know what size rope I need to get because okay. I have like three different the sizes. Okay, I'll, we'll get up there tomorrow, I'm hoping. If okay. it's too long, you can always shorten it. Yes, yes. Yeah. You just don't want to make it Yeah. Yeah. Unless you because, got a rope stretcher. Um, the guy at the flag store said it's a 20 foot or a 25 foot. Okay. Flag pole. Yeah, well, I got some help tomorrow. We'll get it measured. Okay. And I'll see if I can look at what the pulley size is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think if you had the right app on an iPhone, you could measure it. You probably can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they have flags that are 3 by 5 or 4 by 6. And I'm leaning towards a 4 by 6. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's with the yeah, yeah. heavy duty air yep. coating on it, yeah. it yep. last yep. longer. Yeah, yep. it's a big area. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Good. Well, I'm glad to to hear that there's forward motion on it. I was going to suggest that we just take the ratty looking flag down until we get a new one, but that sounds like we're we'll have yeah, it we're working replaced on it. pretty soon. Having the yeah. time to yeah, with someone else standing put something up there to go measure it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Town Treasurer's report. So over the last two weeks, table expense for gross was ten thousand seven hundred and thirty three dollars and forty three cents. AP was sixteen thousand three hundred twenty two dollars and fourteen cents. Uh, tax bills have been flowing in. We had income of one hundred and twenty one thousand one hundred seventy nine dollars and fifty two cents. Uh, delinquent taxes was only $313.68. I made a transfer out of the checking into the money market of $75,000. And I'll be making another one tomorrow once it's cleared the bank. Um, so there was an error on tax bills and it was missed on our new town park and a tax bill was created of $290.13. Um, that needs to um, have a, a board of abatement needs to make. Did we meet the same night we do the grand list? Mm. It's the same people, isn't it? No, it no, isn't. It's different. Okay. Yeah. No, there there's a whole zone, different there's different a whole different. special zoning board of abatement. Um, but, but I wouldn't see. Well, why I thought not. the board of civil authority also abated taxes. No. 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 Different. Okay. It's a different. It's a different yeah. Gotcha. But Don't listen to me. Then. Do, how long do you think yours is going to take? I know we met a couple times, but I just don't want to uh -huh. recall. Uh -huh. We'll see if we can make it happen all in one, try and make it in one. Yeah, because we could always do that first. Yeah. yeah. So the, t the town park was listed as the old, yeah. the old space. It was or, never corrected, and so there was a tax bill generated. Oh. The listers or I cannot go in there and do an abatement. It needs to be a board. Okay. Okay. To abate any money that, that mm -hmm. is part of the grand list. Okay. So, All right. Um, that one. So I know bits and pieces, but yeah. we'll have to. Um, so we'll be first, Robin's first board of abatement. Okay. So this is this the zoning board of abatement that would would do that? Oh, or? it's a tax abatement. Tax, tax abatement. So you have. And who who the is board, on that? The treasurer. Um, select, your select board. Our listers. Yeah. Uh, typically the delinquent tax collectors there. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. 
we've met. Sounds like all the right people. It's pretty much this, um, a lot of the same people. Yeah, it is. So we can do, I mean, literally it's going to take 10 minutes. I'm just saying we can warn the meeting just before Robin's meeting. Yep. The list is going to take five minutes and be done mm -hmm. and move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. It's abated and then I'll have to do the journal entry and it'll show in our abatement of that, that money took it out of the, the general fund. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we wouldn't have to get all together for let's, a five minute meeting. Yeah, let's try to do it on the same. And are there like uh, warning? I mean, does it have to be warned? Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Absolutely. Probably 48 hours. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same deal. It's 48. Yep. Okay. All right. I've never done the whole process. I usually just show up and. Yeah. <laughs> it just it meets the same public meeting laws. It just yeah. has to be. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's a special meeting, so it probably is only 24 hours. But yeah. I don't know. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Other things. Anything else, Brandy? I don't think so. So, um, I kind of tagged onto your report the questions about the um, audit. Um, I had said that I would contact the LCT um, yeah, I saw that. about the auditors. I think I sent the I correspondence on to everybody. So, I don't really have to go over that. The gist of it is, is that we can. Um, and we should. And we should. We can hire an auditor. Um, and for this particular fiscal year, um, we can, um, the select board can do that. What we would need to do if we want to make a change and that we don't, we no longer depend on town residents uh, serving in the, as an auditor role, um, that would have to be a decision that would be made by the town residents at town So meeting. we'd have to warn a town meeting to do a change. Yes, right. to make a change that way. Um, there was an email from Diana Peduzzi mentioning that maybe she could cajole a couple of other people to be auditors um, so that we wouldn't have to go through the expense of um, hiring an auditor. Um, I, I think, um, you know, we have an RFP. I think we, ready to go. I think we should go through that process and if there yeah. are people that step forward and it seems like they could adequately serve in that role, then then uh, we'll maybe go that way. Um, um, Do you want to just make a motion to go ahead and send the RFP out? Sure, I just need some um, some dates. Um, so um, when, I mean, we could, if we send it out now. Just give it uh, 30 days. Yeah. Okay. So here's the part about, all bidders are hereby notified that sealed proposals must be received by the Woodbury Town Clerk, or we could say Town Treasurer too. Um, uh, by 1 p.m. Um, and um, so if we were to send it out, it's all ready to go except for putting the dates in. If we were to send it out Friday, say by the end of the Thursday. week, that's, that's you're here Thursday. You guys work Thursday. Yes. How about yeah. Thursday? Yeah. By Thursday. Um, so I mean, I could just quickly type these things in. I could have it to you tomorrow. Um, I'll send it to you tomorrow. Um, that would make you do the 21st of September would be 30 days. Okay. I do my math right. All right, so 21 September. Um, proposals received after will be returned, so after September 20. No, 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 21st is the date. The only issue would be is our we would miss our, our meeting, so it wouldn't get looked at till, so we till could go so far, maybe yeah. let it go to the 28th. Okay. Or even the 30th, because you know I'm just saying okay. give it until, okay. let's say the 28th, because that right. gives it a four or five days for mm -hmm. to collect the info. Yeah. So say, because that, because no, if we're going to, it gives them an extra week, because okay. our meeting's not until October, a couple so, weeks, and we can go what, later. What would, so um, what would the date be that we would open them up? Um, what would be the it first would be select board meeting? October 11th, which is okay. uh, the first select board meeting in October. Okay. All right, so those that are gives the, you more than 30 days. Yep, those are the dates we need. So, 
So um, I will put the dates in on the copy that I have and I'll send it down to both the town clerk and the town treasurer. It'll be there uh, when you open up your computers in the morning. Okay, we want to hit the Yeah, um, I would also just, you know, I know we've got a, um, a, a bid proposal from Sullivan and Powers last time. I would send the RFP directly to them. If there are any other, uh, I don't know of any other entities that, yeah, so Times Argus, you know, all the usual papers I got. Oh, the world. The world, yeah. Gazette. Are you going to use um, News and Citizens out of Morrisville Stowe? Sure, why not? Might as well. Yeah. And then we'll just have to decide before January if we're going to propose a change in the audit right. status. Yeah. Yeah. This is just for the next they are not going to be looking at it. Seems like we'll be leaning that way because that's mm -hmm. you're not breaking the door down to. Right. <laughs> and we'll see. You know, in the emails from the folks that yeah, I read they mentioned, they pretty, pretty much saying most towns are doing that doing now. That. I, I, yep. It's just the way things are. Yep. And it's good for us. Yeah, I think right. it's good for us. Right? We've had some issues, yeah. bickering yeah. issues with auditors. And things. Yeah, that's, like, that's why we don't have yeah, any. Right that's now. why we don't have auditors. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but well, I heard that. Exactly. Yeah, so that's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. It kind of does away with that. Is that for this current fiscal year we're doing this for, or is it going to be for next fiscal year? No, it's for the fiscal year that it just, just ended, ended. That, and that needs to be audited before right. the end of the calendar year. Right. So we have to have this done by... We've got to get it done by the 31st. December 31st. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully It'll be okay. we'll have somebody that's willing to jump on this for the next few months and do it. That's that. Yeah. Right. I don't know what happens if we can't find anybody. I mean, we could just, I guess we'll just... Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Yeah, I think we do it anyway. In house. It's late. I think if it's late, we still do it. That's the right thing to do. Right. Yeah. It's just this and little. get ready for the next one. Mm -hmm. We just wouldn't have a report for the town. Yeah. Report. Yeah. It but should hopefully. be some intense since the town has never ever had an outside audit. Yeah. Right. But don't don't you think we're due? Well, no, yeah. No, no, I agree. Oh, we've been thinking. Wait, we're yeah, we've been thinking we've been due for a while. The way yeah. I was taught books in a way that an audit is going to want me to do books. Yeah. Because yeah. it'll be a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be the ball. Process yep. the and one of the silver linings in this is you know, not, not only are they checking the books, but they're also checking the whole process and the system. Because right. if we have issues with how we're doing stuff, fresh. they'll tell us. They'll tell us. Yep. That's one of the nice things about. Okay, so um, I'll send that um, tomorrow morning, and um, we'll send it out. Uh, any questions for Brandy or anything else, Brandy, that you'd like to share? I'm good. Okay, all right. Thank so, you. town highway report. Well, um, a week ago Monday, I thought we were going to have Foster Hill Road all done, but it was Tuesday before we got to I mm -hmm. it done, but it is done. Mm -hmm. um, the school parking lot. Thought it was going to be done today, but they had a conference up there and had 45 cars in the road this morning, so that's going to be done tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I should have given you a heads up on that. I didn't realize it was going to be that large, but you know, I've been dealing with the roofing contractor and the the school um, asked that they not arrive today. So, um, but I didn't didn't even think of. It wasn't that big a deal. We yeah. showed up a load of gravel to get into a different yeah. place. And yeah. Okay. So it wasn't a big deal, but yeah. um, I wanted to be able to tell you it was done tonight. Uh huh. Didn't work. Well, if it um, could have been done, what you've done so far it looks pretty yeah. nice, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I want to bring up uh, a point. I don't know if you want to do it now or afterwards or whatever, but I think there needs to be something planted inside that sign over there. Take up some space. Can we talk to the village flower people? I've called them twice and they haven't got back to me. So okay. If somebody else wants to try, that'd be great. All right. Yeah. I, 
I had the same thought. Some plant and that, the way it's staggered now, it yeah, would be nice. nice. Make it look nice. Yeah. 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 Either some hostas or a couple bird bushes or even a couple of cedars that were groomed. Uh, right. Yeah. Most anything would be would improve. Okay. Yeah. And it would look good. Yeah. Maybe um, you know there is a pretty good school gardening committee or something. Also, maybe they would be interested in. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'll I'll do some asking around. And, All right. Well, cool. Yeah. Maybe they'll call you back. Right. Um, yes. I've been trying to get guardrails put in over there, and I am not having any luck. I can't get any put in till October. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. But well, up through along the side. Mm hmm And make it circle into the school. Mm hmm So that's the plan. As soon as I can get somebody up there, we're going to put. I don't know, 50, 60 feet, 60, 50, 60 feet of guardrail in. Okay, yeah. And then and when they're down there, can they fix the end by the annex that got bent? Yeah. Look, yeah. they got hit with the loader a few years ago, as long as they're coming. Right, right. right. Yeah. So by October, I mean, that's that's, fine, that's okay. You know, ground yeah. timing, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, I was trying to get everything wrapped up so that before the school started, started. we didn't yeah. have to be up there and nobody was going to be screwing right. with them and they wouldn't be in our way. And right. So but, maybe what we can do is, um, I'm thinking maybe check in, uh, and again, I'm glad to do this, so check in with the school and see if there's some kind of vacation at some point in October, that, you know, so that we the work could be done without compromising people coming in and out of the school right. to see if there's a, a downtime, you know, some either a vacation or... I don't think that that's... We took that big rock out of there and we replaced all that soil in there, yeah. so the gravel and everything. So it should be pretty quick. And and take, yeah, no. I would guess a couple hours, they're going to pound that in and be done. Okay, That's all a right. serious rock, too. It yeah. is. It's a big rock. What can yeah. we do with that? We should... Uh, it's not right. Put it in the park. Right. 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 Well, right. 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 oh, oh, that's a big I'll rock. Go okay. take a look. It's big. It's the size of a van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's gorgeous. There's a lot of story that goes with that. Mm -hmm, I'm but sure. the town really doesn't have anything big enough to move it with. Ah, mm. uh -huh. okay. So if it's going to get picked up and go across that blacktop, it's going to have to be the quarry loader or something like that. Yeah, okay. they have some pretty big. Um, oh, they got plenty of got they plenty got iron machinery. Up there. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Diana had mentioned that she'd like it in this park over here. Uh huh. So I told her that she was more than welcome to set it up with the quarry mm -hmm. because the town wasn't going to take responsibility for that great big machine with that boulder on the front of it going in beside that culvert. Right. It shut mm -hmm. down. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If she decides she wants it there, just so you people know that mm -hmm. she's on her own. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make sure it's not on the fire department's land over there either. And, and oh, it can't right. be there because it's gonna be a hazard to Yeah, we can't, home. yeah. I mm -hmm. just don't Well, anyway. Many. Yeah. Um, it should be displayed somewhere. It's a beautiful rock. Yeah, there will yeah, be when it gets washed a, off. But, quite a chunk of quartz. Um, I can't believe how big it was. Yeah. Yeah. We had to... Uh, we done some mowing with the loader and the new mowing machine last Thursday, mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened. Something happened, and we had a flat tire on the loader, and I cut a bell mm -hmm. stem off. Mm -hmm. So we had to have the tire company up last Thursday afternoon and put a new tube in it, and mm -hmm. fix it. Mm -hmm. It was back to the garage at night, so mm -hmm. that was cool. Mm -hmm. um, the people up on Keen Farm. Packet somebody. Yeah, the, and the speed is this the speeding issue that is he talked to you at all? No, but I. Well, he's back arguing with them about speed, and he's thinking that he wants a speed bump up there where the class four and the class three come together. And last winter, we talked about that, and I don't remember if you folks that go ahead and do it or not. I don't remember. Discussing a speed bump. I mean, we probably did discuss a speed bump. We were discussing different options. We um, did, I think and we said but that, I don't remember the outcome. Yeah. I think we said, aren't there giant culverts that can do the job? Right. And I, we didn't go past that. You know, dig a water bar in there. That might the, be needed. Yeah, just well, take a yeah. couple water bars. And, yeah, well, we... I mean, I can't... How can... I mean, that's a pretty small road, and... 
the people that are driving by his place are going onto an even smaller road. I can't imagine them doing 50 miles an hour on that road. So I don't, it seems kind of like a, there might be, a, a, you know, a neighborly dispute. How, yeah, how much of an issue that the town should worry right. about. And after about two hours of being out here, listening to him, uh -huh. I'd be happy. Yeah, so, I understand. Yeah. Uh, if you tell me, if he calls back and you tell me it's all right to put a speed bump in there or a, a water bar in there, I'll put one in. But I, uh, I don't know what to do with it. Right. We did put a sign up there. We for, put signs up yeah. there. Yeah. And it's, you know, a, a speed bump would be a hassle of plowing, wouldn't it? If it was a plow? No, because it would be far enough. It would be over on the class four prior. Okay. But we're gonna put bump signs in there. I mean, we can't just leave. Right. We can't dig a hole and leave it. So right. Coming from experience, driving yeah. on one of it, it's gonna bottom out and rip right up from underneath it. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, the neighbors drive on one of it. Yeah, they're pretty long. Right. The town will be replacing cars. I think I just think it's just going to be a problem for us. They're very yeah, hard. I think we should. I mean, that's why I'm asking right now because okay. I wasn't going to go up there and do it without somebody telling right, me. Right, because if they right. tear off their exhaust system on our right, well, from bump or the bump so, gets knocked down, we got to put it back up and. I, you know, my feeling is. What do you do for class four roads? We don't have to the, only thing, culverts. the only thing we're responsible for is the bridges and culverts, and now we're also responsible for erosion. Erosion, yeah. And both of these houses are on the class four part no, also. Yeah. No, 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 one is on the class three. Oh, yeah. but it ends in front of the half. Oh, yeah. Those okay. class four. <clears throat> I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's felt like having two cats you can't get along. You should turn right. tails together and throw over clothes on it. I mean, we, we, did, we put the sign up, we did what we could do, um, and, you know, I can't imagine them really speeding that much, but I think it's something that they need to work out amongst themselves. Okay. Yeah, I, I think if we get involved, then we'll be up there all the time dealing with it. Yeah. Right. Well, I, and that's it, and, and I'm sick of listening to Patrick, so uh, right. I'm just, now I know where we're standing. Yeah. I put him into it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he's kind of gotten used to living there at the end, kind of like the end of the road. There never used to be people right really now there. Right now there is. He said he'd been there 27 years. Yeah. He never had to put up with it until some dude out there married this girl, and mm -hmm. now they don't get along. I don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah, <they're not. laughs> okay. Um, so. No. No, yeah. we're not going to do not anything. Not What's that? We're not getting paid enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> and up to. Oh boy, I had his name where I'm on the end of my tongue. Rick Barrett. Yeah. At the end of the road up there, mm -hmm. they, the water had been settling in the road, between the road and their driveway and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And he mm -hmm. called me up, wanted to know if I could come up and look at it. I want to look at that. Today I had the tail bring me up six yards of uh, three quarter inch clutch reg and I <laughs> fixed it so that the water will go across the road. Put a mm -hmm. water barrier in. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed like the right thing to do because okay. it yep. was basically in the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, well thank you for doing thank that. You. Okay, thank you. And as soon as we can get the school finished up, I think it'll be tomorrow, mm -hmm. but you know how things can go. Yeah. We're going to stare on the cabin road that day. Okay. So I need, is that vent the way that I wrote it, the, the material, or is there, did they change it? It's, there's no changes um, to the grant. It's pretty much the way, the way you wrote it. Um, yeah. Well, you wrote it, I just well, gave yeah. it yeah, but. But, you know, based on what you, the estimates that you had given me. Okay. Um, and I can, did I ever send you the? No. Okay, I will send that to you. Um, be good for me to look at it again, too, now that we're getting at it. Um, it seems like it was. I hope to move up there tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, okay. Um, 
yeah, I can't remember exactly how much it was for, but it was a considerable amount of money. I think it was, it like was either 172000 or 187000 and I don't right. remember which. Right, yeah. There's like 75 loads of gravel yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want to make sure that we use it all. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I will, um, I'll find that on my computer. I will send it to you. I'll send it to the select board also. Um, yeah, I, I have the copy that I sent to you originally. So okay. I, did, we, I just didn't, we had talked, you said it's been dated and we hadn't talked about it. I didn't know if it had been changed. Yeah. That was my concern. Yeah, no, I didn't change, I went by the figures that you gave me. Yeah. yeah. So. And they don't change, they don't change anything? No, they, they were fine with it just the way it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I keep on thinking I'd like to make up some kind of little log for the road crew. Um, um, what I might do is try to draw one up, and um, Brandy did up a drawn log that I made for myself um, on the computer. Um, sometimes it's really hard to track what was done. And when I like doing the reports, I kind of have to figure it out or call up Greg. You know, there's, Greg gives me these kind of notes. Um, usually, you know, I have the number of hours, but I, it's hard for me to extract what equipment was used for how many hours because that's all a part of. All right. Um, so, right. Um, actually, I'm going to be spending quite a lot of time up there. Okay. So that's I intended to do that and keep track of it. Okay. And one thing I want to do, and the boys are pretty reluctant to it, but I want to move the grader up there. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to Danny, my nephew, we can park it there. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that while Greg and Peter are putting culverts in, that Greg Grizzly needs to be hauling gravel and have the grader up there so he can shape it up at the end of the day. Okay, yeah. Because I would like to have that wrapped up before snow flies this year. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we're. Doesn't feel like it right now, but we're getting there. Hey, we're definitely it's getting be, there. It's going to be there sooner than maybe in a couple of weeks. Which, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when it turns into a month doing Foster Hill. Yeah. That's about three quarters of a mile long. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a lot of it. I had them doing a lot of other things too. But. Yeah. And it, and it may be, you know, with that grant, we don't have to get it done before snow flies. We will have time next year, too. I hear you. Yep. You'd like to. But yep. I know you'd like to. We did that last year, and then all of a sudden we had a parking lot do, we got a school parking lot do, and mm -hmm. a hundred other things come along in the road, like Foster Hill. And yep. The summer goes real fast. It does, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, in the future, um, it might be good to kind of work out a like a five-year plan, um, what projects, right? Because, I mean, you guys have been doing a lot of projects this summer, um, and, uh, you know, um, it's kind of amazing the amount of work that's, I mean, you can't do it all at once. I mean, it takes, it, right. there's a lot of work to do, and it takes, uh, so, you know, maybe we could, at some point um, in the select board meetings, or you could think about it with Greg, just kind of work out, a, well, like next year, we'll do this and this and this, and um, you know, kind of work it out. Um, and then we can look and see if any of those projects are, if there might be grant money available to help with them, you know, stuff like well, that. I'm kind of leaning towards next year, and I haven't brought it up, to, I've mentioned it to Greg, but I haven't talked to them about it, is paying attention to cut and brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't happen a whole lot this summer. Well, we're still, it's still, still we're in time. progress, but yeah. it, these roads are getting grown in now, so it really needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, speaking of projects, um, there was a, a question from the Fish and Wildlife, the conservation camp. I saw you. Um, yeah, they they have received uh, thirty thousand dollars from the state to fix up the Buck Lake Road. So um, I'm just wondering if that's worth, you know, meeting with them and seeing what they have in mind. And because I think they're thinking that the Woodbury, I mean, it is a town class four road, that the road crew would be the ones doing the work. 
Or they could hire somebody. Or they could that hire somebody. That might be better yeah. for us because yeah. you guys got enough to do. Yeah. Because they so, may have a window that that grant has to be done. I don't know if it's even a grant. I think it's just oh, money, money. From, money from the state. You're probably spending it in this fiscal year, though. So that's what I'm saying. I just They might yeah. want to look at hiring. Yeah, they're, talk, they're talking about money having money. the work done next summer. Or, um, oh. and I, I don't know the specifics. They didn't give me any dates. and. I just, I think that I found the email uh, Friday or Saturday when I opened up my computer. So, so I might, maybe what I'll do is um, talk a little bit more to the person that sent me that email and just get a better sense what, what of what that is, what they yeah, want to do. Yeah. And then we'll. $30,000 for annual road railways. Right. Yeah. Probably just going to gravel the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, it's yeah, water. you'll probably get a call with the tow and some. It could Ditching definitely use gravel and some brush cutting and probably some culverts. Yeah, but there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot of there. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so we'll try to get a better sense of a time frame, and and then maybe, um, maybe we could just meet with some folks up there and, and get a sense of what they're thinking of, and then we can let them know whether or not. Yeah. What? As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if we're working on the Buck Lake Road or the Cabin. Right. So, but. We need to have an understanding with somebody that something's going to wait. Right. If, if the town goes on that. Yeah. Like yeah. Paul said, you know, they may be better off to. Mm -hmm. Right. If they need to get it done, I hate to put it something else on their plate. Right. If they could hire someone to draw all that gravel and even right. just great, I don't know what they plan. That's what's happening. Yeah. yeah, that's what we got to find out what they have in mind. Right. Well, if it's, yeah. I would place. guess they're going to want to try to turn that into a plastery road for thirty thousand. You ain't going to do it. You got to widen it as a bunch of trees to cut. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they want it to be a class three road. But I, you know, it, the road is pretty good once you get up the hill from the turnaround. Um, it's that that hill seems to be the the worst section of the road. Um, the road into the camp is in pretty good shape, really. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll pursue that a little bit further and try to find out a little bit more about it. Um, so, I'm curious to know what you found in the town office parking lot when you dug down there. I noticed there's not water seeping up anymore. <laughs> uh, we found a, well, a lead pipe uh -huh. with a stone that was pretty near pushed through it. Uh -huh. So, we cut it and fixed it. Mm -hmm. Checked it both sides down through about six feet each way, and it was good. And mm -hmm. threw a piece of styrofoam over it and covered it back up. Okay. And is that the water line to, you think, to Gary Clark's house? It goes that way, and he yeah. paid the bill, so I'm thinking he, it was. He paid the bill. Okay, that's, yeah. that was another question I had. Okay, good. So we basically fixed his so water line. solved for him. his water problem. Yep, good. I'm assuming that it must have, it must have got better because. I gave him a bill last Sunday, and I get the bill, and I get the check mm -hmm. Saturday. So okay. Wow. I'm assuming he was relatively happy. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, um, anything else? Town town roads? Nah, uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Any? No, any I'm good. Thank you. Well, no doubt when I get out the door, I'll think it's all Okay. Myself. All right. Yeah. So next on the agenda is um, the Woodbury School um, outdoor classroom, and I can kind of bring people up to speed on that. There's been a group of folks um, meeting. Um, we actually started talking about this last year during the pandemic um, of building an outdoor classroom um, at the school um, down by the, the wetland area. Um, and um, it would be a project that um, this, the school, the unions, the school district would pay um, for some of the materials and then people in town um, would basically get together and build the structure. Um, Larry Eldred and Peter Peltz are, are sort of the contractors that have been overseeing the discussion and um, Michael Sadler, who met with us last select board meeting, um, is on the planning commission. He's a landscape architect, so he's designed a classroom. Um, and this would be a building that the town would also be able to use for so whatever. Is a closed building or just a roof? 
It would be a, a basically an open building okay. uh, with a roof, um, and it would be screened in um, just to because you know the end of the school year usually in the spring is black fly season and yeah, I can't imagine outside. having a class there with wouldn't want to be outside right now the mosquitoes are bad right, right. and this it would keep um, so the school has a chunk of money that that um, that they're going to spend on this uh, we have the Elizabeth Stratton has been kind of uh, gathering folks um, and this and, is different than the gazebo Thing that they were going to put in the swamp. Yeah, then then the dock. Yeah, this is a the dock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's another project that Got kind it. of waiting okay. waiting to happen maybe sometime in the future. Um, and and my thought was, we you know we have um, I think it's eight thousand eight hundred and eighty nine dollars uh, sitting in this school fund. That's money that was left over. Um, when we transferred to the Union School District, um, that original chunk of money, which was that w which the town had collected to fix the roof, um, you know, we've had this money left over. Um, and the way the lease is set up now, there's nothing involving the school that's a town expense anymore. Um, we, so I would love to be able to just close out that fund and give that money towards this project. Um, but I would, I, I, would need, with that. I would need approval from the select board. Um, I'll make that motion. Okay, um, do I hear a second on that at all? I will second. Okay, is there any more discussion? Um, anybody have any thoughts about... Um, so I, you know, I don't know what the town would use it for, but you know, we could. I mean, technically, well, it was could, school money, and it's going to be spent at the schools. So. Yeah, yeah, and it will be a building. You know, if there could be a wedding there, I suppose, and then they could walk up to the town hall and have a reception, or um, there could be uh, committee meetings that could happen there. Um, uh, could you know, it could. It, it definitely will be of use to the town also. Um, it wouldn't be a school, um, just a school thing. So, um, any thoughts? Anybody else have any thoughts on um, using that school leftover school fund um, from the roof to, to into this go into this project? It would also be another aspect of this is that it really this could prove to be. Um, or would be definitely be an asset to the school in keeping the school as a school. Um, with the new principal, there's a, a really strong um, outdoor education component that will now become part of the curriculum at the at the school. The teachers, all the teachers have uh, had done a training this summer. The principal has kind of a, a familiarity and background in the outdoor education. Um, so the you know all of the other stuff that goes the grounds around the school um, um, will be u utilized, um, and this classroom would be kind of a centerpiece for that for that type of focus um, for the school. Um, so to me, it's it seems like a great great thing to do, um, you know, and, and it will get get built with town by town residents, like some of the other buildings that are there, like the library or the the school annex community room. Um, so, if, without any any other questions, um, I would um, let's see. All those in favor Robert's of you? Got a question? Oh, Robert. Okay, go ahead. Good. Now, this fund is the same fund you say the library roof. Is no, the okay. old school roof. The, the old, old school, school years ago. Okay. You know, a few years ago, we we, we repaired, replaced the it was school. Out of the school building fund. Right. Yeah, right. It was two separate accounts. Okay. The school. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all those in favor of using that uh, leftover um, money towards the outdoor classroom, uh, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Good. So, I will let the this sort of ad hoc committee know that. Um, oh, some quick updates. Uh, Town Hall, uh, Richard is working away at the it's painting. Nice. Yeah. He's kind of thinking that he'll probably just, um, he may not run up, run out of the amount of money that we had 
allocated for the painting, but he's thinking that by the time he gets done the front of the building, he's got to focus on his wood pile. So, um, so the, I think the front will get done. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and uh, and then if there's money left over, we'll see about what happens later. Um, so, um, and uh, I don't know, Chris. We, we I, I had sent a, an email from Patty Garbeck about the wondering about the West Woodbury Cemetery, and it um, sounds like we still haven't heard from the from Bear about. I've had a hard time getting in touch with Bear yeah. about the data that we gave him. Okay. So I, I I'd like to think it's moving forward, but yeah. I don't have an answer. Okay. Hopefully, I'll have something for the next meeting. Okay. Um, and then a quick update on the library roof. Uh, the library roof will be worked on um, probably on Wednesday. Um, I, there was an email, the, the contractor was going to send me an email. He's watching the weather and the hurricane that's, that's um, and, yeah, so if it, um, he may, they may be here tomorrow. Um, I'll find out when I get home, hopefully. Um, but Wednesday for sure, the weather should be. It'd be good, and, and um, they can pretty much do that work in a day. Um, that's what he says, and uh, I'll believe them. Um, so hopefully uh, by the end of the week we'll have a new roof on the library. Um, and then this Saturday here in the town hall, um, we're going to have a first review of the draft of the town plan. So I just wanted to publicly note that um, for the... Where's that here? Right here, right here in the town hall. Yeah, um, so I think it's it's Saturday morning. I think it was from ten to noon. Um, there'll be some presentations. Uh, we'll talk about the draft plan, and it sounds like Skip uh, Lindsay has lined up the Woodbury Donut people, so there'll be donuts and coffee. So, um, if nothing else, you can get a good donut and a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, I just want to, and then uh, I called uh, Efficiency Vermont, and we do have a, an energy assessment um, scheduled on September 10th. Did I write down the date? No, that's, uh, yeah, September 10th, which is a Friday. Put it in your iPhone. Right, yeah. <laughs> My iPhone is a little uh, calendar book, though. But they'll be looking at the town office, the town hall, and the town garage. Um, and the, the assessment is free. We'll get some kind of report back from them. Um, and then whether or not we want to proceed further to uh, actual energy audit, um, uh, that'll, that'll be up to us. We'll, we'll, we'll have them. Um, Do you have times? Are they scheduled yet? Yeah, it is scheduled. And my memory is that I was going to meet the person uh, at 10. Um, I can let them into the office. You know, I have a key, and I have a key to the town hall. And I actually have a key to the town garage. So I can be the tour guide. I'm going to set up for that, and and then we'll get an assessment from them, and um, we'll take a look at that and figure out where we want to go from there. Um, and that's. Well, what about uh, policy, uh, personnel policy? Did that get back from? I haven't heard any. Okay. We're still yes. Yeah, so the update okay. on that is that we're still waiting. Um, Just. Threw it out there because I was like, hey. yeah, no. I think in a way, um, you know, what I'd like to do is maybe meet with the town treasurer and the town clerk so we can go over that part of the personnel policy that really hasn't been worked on yet. What, uh, you know, what benefits the town treasurer and the town clerk get, um, and uh, I think we could work that out on our on our own um, just to move forward on that because um, I'm not totally clear. What I wanted to do was um, have that part of the personnel policy be totally separate from the employees because um, it was kind of convoluted where the, in this particular one, the town clerk and the town treasurer get this, you know, 18 hours prorated, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I wanted to have that all separate so it's pretty clear what the town treasurer and the town clerk can expect to get. Um, according to VLCT and passive, um, the town clerk and the town treasurer are supposed to sign an agreement um, towards the personnel policy, also. Um, so it seems. been a discussion on the, the, um, the treasurer's and clerk's uh, website uh -huh. because we're elected. 
right? They're elected positions, we right? Sign. We're our own boss. Right. Okay. And the, and the town doesn't have to offer you benefits either. So that's that's the reason for the agreement. This basically the benefits are for employees. So and the fact that you do basically are part time employees, um, there are some benefits that that the town has offered, but we aren't obligated to do that um, according to the LCT. So, um, uh, so that's the reason for the agreement. Um, and, you know, we can um, talk some more about that if you want. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'll try to get a better, you know, you can call the LCT and talk to them about that too if you want. But that's, that was what I, that's my understanding of the, the reason for this agreement is that, um, you know, the personnel policy really is addressing the town employees and not elected officials. So, um, so yeah, uh, I will bug them again. It's you know it, it, it it's pretty frustrating that they you know the first step in this is just for them to take a quick look at it and send us back an estimate of what it might cost, and it's been over two months and we haven't even gotten that yet. Um, so yeah, it's a little frustrating. Um, are there any any other business at all? Yeah, there is actually. When okay. you started talking about the LTC, I, I was talking about the bicycle signs and stuff you won't put up. Yeah. And they are telling me that you should check with VLTC before you go ahead and okay that. that Somewhere it's illegal. It's not legal to do that. Oh, okay. All right, I can. So I, can ask I haven't it. ordered any signs. You right. should check it out. Okay. And I will. We'll go from there. Okay. Yep. So. So who 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 is they that are telling you that? Parker is the okay. biggest one. Okay. The road crew. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll ch I'll check and that out. I heard it from a uh, hybrid road crew too. Okay. All right. So I remember nothing's easy. You know that, right? Right. What's that? Is it nothing's easy? We I was just telling Ryan nothing's easy. Right. Yeah. Right. It's always okay. something. Okay. But I, we should check it out before we move ahead. All right. Okay. I will. Okay. I'll, I'll send them a, a email question and. We'll, okay. They're pretty good at responding to those. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll. Well, uh, when you find out, give me. Email me and I will. we'll get started on it. Effects. Okay, Once whatever response I get, I will. I'll share it with, with everybody. All right. Yeah, I'll try to get that out um, tomorrow. Uh, that's it on the agenda. Motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're done. That pile of papers. Oh, yep. Or if you're not done, hand me one of them.